welcome you all to the lecture series on corporate law. The present lecture, I will be discussing the nature of the directors, their appointment, and the duties. It is one of the very, very core important subject of corporate law. The reason is that companies exist only in the fiction theory, in realistic theory, or in reality, it is the board of directors or the promoters who becomes the directors at the later stage that they manage the company and they control the company and they take all the decisions which forms and part of the best interest of the company and also the best interest of the shareholders, creditors and all the stakeholders. So, we will see the provisions of Companies Act 2013 where the types of the directors and the appointment of directors are scattered in the various provisions. I will try to throw some light whereby the listeners can have the uh, initial understanding of the subject where you can apply in the practical life and also provide the legal solutions to the directors who are approaching you for the legal advice as well as any guidance with regard to the appointment and what is meant by the directors, the appointment of directors, as well as the duties of the directors. Now, let us see the meaning of the director. Section 2, class 34 of the Companies Act 2013 defines the director. Director means a director appointed to the board of a company. So it is a one simple line. Uh, director means a director. Because the company SAC applies the meaning of the dictionary meaning because the director is one of the official or a person appointed in the board. And remember, meaning of the board has also been defined under section 2 class 30 of the Companies Act, the board of directors are or are board in relation to a company as the collective body of directors of the company. So directors are the board of directors. We call them as a collective body and these directors would be performing various duties. So the legal definition of the director means a director appointed to the board by the company. Board means board of directors of the company as a collective body of the directors of the company according to the section 2 class 30 of the Companies Act 2013 and 2 class 34 of the Companies Act which defines the directors. If anybody wants to be a director, there are certain prerequisites. Say for example, Mr. A wishes to be the director of the company or Mr. A is the promoter of, right, a promoter of the A Limited. Whether he can become a director being a promoter. The prerequisites to become a director is that one of the prerequisites. The person has to apply for the number, right? He has to apply for a number. The name of the number is Director Identification Number. That is called DIN number. So every person who intends, right? Every person who intends to be the director 
or member of the board of director should apply for the number the number is the din number director identification number the person has to apply to the central government central government will provide the din number so it is one of the prerequisites to have the din number if the candidate has no din number then it becomes very difficult to become the director of the companies so these provisions like section 123 153 154 155 157 and 158 these provisions deals with regard to the application for the din number allotment of the din number prohibition to applying prohibition to obtain more than one DIN number and directed to intimate the DIN number to the concerned authorities and company to inform director identification number to the registrar then 158 obligation to indicate director identification number just I'm informing that a whereby the listeners will have a understanding if anybody wishes or if anybody approaches you that I want to be a director of the company, one of the prerequisites which you can tell them kindly apply for the DIN number, acquire the DIN number first, then the second and the later stages of the or subsequent proceedings would follow automatically. Now there are various uh, types of the directors as per the Companies Act. The first and foremost director is the first two directors. Now let us take a small example. There is an X Limited company, seven persons incorporated, right? Seven persons incorporated this company on say 1st November 2022. One of the primary questions will come to us. If the company came into existence on November 1st, 2022, who will be the first two directors? So I will repeat again. The day when the company takes birth, the day when the company comes into existence, then who are the directors or who can become the first directors? Yet there are two answers for this. The first and foremost answer is that where no provision is made in the Articles of Association for appointment of the first directors, the subscribers of memorandum who are individuals shall be deemed to be the first directors of the company. Right? Unless the contrary or some additional provisions are in the Articles of Associations, the subscribers of memorandum who are individuals shall be deemed to be the first two directors of the company unless appointed in the duly appointed in the process. So the answer is here is that on the date of incorporation that is November 1st 2022 the people who signs the MOA they become the first two directors. So the first two document I may repeat again the first and foremost document on the law deals with regard to the directors is the Articles of Association of the respective companies. Kindly remember, if someone approaches you about the guidance of the directors, the first and foremost document, kindly look into the articles of association of the specific company then you try to guide them in the absence of the express provisions in the articles of associations then you can take the help of the companies act because articles of associations as well as the companies act both will travel as simultaneously so the first director that means the first director mean the subscribers of the MOA who are individuals 
they are the first directors as determined under the articles of association and the provision for this is again given under the 152. Now I will try to explain uh, some other common cultures of the directors except the MD and CEO because I will be taking the one more big lecture with regard to the managing director as well as CEO of the company. Now we are talking with regard to the other types of the directors like for example additional director, alternative directors, directors appointed in casual vacancy, independent directors and nominee directors. So most of the things are dis dealt in the section 161 of the Companies Act. One of the fundamental questions will come to us, who are these additional directors, who are these alternative directors and how these are being appointed. Let us take this small hypothetical example, then the subject becomes very easy to understand. Say for example, X Limited has 7 persons in articles of association, they appointed, right? They appointed four people as first directors, right? X Limited Company, there are seven people who incorporated the company. Out of the seven people, four people become the directors. Now, in the case of any person, right? Out of the four, one has taken any leave or going to abroad, right? Going to abroad. Then, in the case of Mr. One, if you appoint another two as alternative to the one, right? Alternative to the one. So, there is already a director. If one of the director is going for some leave or is going for some other, uh, abroad or some other purpose, you can make them as an alternative directors. Then additional directors means, now in order to understand the additional directors, we have to understand another premise, what can be the maximum number of directors for any limited companies? How many directors can be there in the public limited companies? Right? I will repeat again. If there is the, a particular company, how many directors can be there in the a particular public limited company? According to the section 149, the maximum number of directors are 15, minimum number of directors are 50, 3. 3 to 15, it can go up to 20. So the maximum number of directors are decided in the Companies Act. If there is a one listed public company, the minimum directors are 3, maximum are 5. In the case, if the max directors are decided in the company, for example, in the excellent company, they decided the maximum number of directors are 10. Out of the 10 directors, 4 are appointed, right? 4 are appointed. There are 6 vacancies are there. And this can be appointed at any point of the time. This we call them as additional directors. So additional directors, alternative directors. So this comes under the, the practice of the uh, business management or the practice with regard to the appointment of the directors. So alternative directors, additional directors, appointed in the casual vacancy. Casual vacancy means every director who is appointed has to retire, right? One third of the directors has to retire in every annual general meeting. So once there is a retirement of the directors, there is an appointment of the directors called the casual vacancy directors. So in the board of directors meeting, right? All the directors, when you see here, they are being appointed in the board of directors, right? One, you have the additional director, alternative directors, appointed in casual vacancy, independent directors. Independent directors is again a big provision under the 
section 149 of the Companies Act, read with the Schedule 4 of the Companies Act 2013. Nominee director is the one who is appointed by lenders or nominated by lending agency that is they are nominated by one of the financial institution right they are appointed by the particular financial institution to take care about the affairs relating to the money which they have lended to look into the aspects of the uh, money which they have given into the uh, particularly with regard to the uh, borrower and creditor relationships so these are the general types of the directors apart from the managing director cfo and all being an introductory lecture i am introducing to the terminology of the directors now let us come back to the section 152 which talks about the appointment of directors so appointment of directors section 152 class 1 says where no provision is made in the AOA for appointment of the first directors, the subscribers to the memorandum who are individuals shall be deemed to be the first directors until they are duly appointed. In the case of the OPC, an individual being the member shall be deemed to the first director until the director or directors are duly appointed by the member in accordance with the provisions of this particular section. So, one is about the AOA, that is what is about the rule book. Second one is about the section 152, which talks about the appointed in the meetings. Continuation of the same provision, 152 class number 3, right? Section 152 class number 3. No person shall be appointed as a director of the company unless he has been allotted a DIN number under 153. This I have already explained in the commencement of a lecture. One of the prerequisites to become the director of the company, you are supposed to get the director identification number, unless otherwise the person is having the DIN number, he cannot be appointed or she cannot be appointed as a director. 152 class number 4, Every person proposed to be appointed as a director by the company in general meeting or otherwise shall furnish the DIN number as required under the 153 and all. So it is again comes under the requisites of the DIN numbers. 152 class number 5. This is very very important. If X Limited is appointing Mr. A as the director, right? X Limited is appointing Mr. A as the director. Mr. A has to express his consent and preferably consent should be in writing. So consent of the person, right? Consent of the director, a proposed person is very, very important. If the company appoints a so-and-so person as a director, Unless he gives a consent to hold the office as a director and the consent has been filed with the registrar within 30 days of his appointment, he cannot hold the post of the directors. Suddenly you may have a doubt. Sir, what, what is the requirement of the consent? How it is going to affect the companies? Let us take small hypothetical example. On the same ex limited company, appointed Mr. A as a director thinking that A would join in a company. On the same hypothetical example, Mr. A may be a big uh, celebrity or big popular name in the capital markets. So company appointed Mr. A as a director and issued the prospectus stating that Mr. A is in the board of directors. By looking the name of the Mr. A, by looking the name of the Mr. A in the board of directors. Lot of people have applied to the public issue. They want to become the members of the company. Thereafter, people are the investors who invested. They came to know that 
Mr. A has not been directed because he has not given the consent. In this case, Mr. A has no liability because he has not given a consent. Company becomes a liable as a misstatement and also a misleading statement. So kindly remember, consent of the person is very, very mandatory to appoint as a director. That is very clearly given under the section 152, class number 5 of the Companies Act, the consent of the directors. And the provision for the same, in the case of the appointment of independent director, in the general meeting, an explanatory statement for such appointment, as far as the notice, which has to be given in the opinion of the board, as the conditions need to be fulfilled. Uh, that is with regard to the, uh, what we can say about the provisions for independent directors. Now, subclass number 6, section 152, subclass number 6. Unless articles provide for the retirement of all directors at every AGM, not less than one third of total number of directors of a public company, right? Not less than one third of the total number of directors of a public company shall be the persons whose period of office is liable to determination by retirement of directors by rotations they will get the retired. It is very simple to understand if a person is appointed as a director in every annual general meeting, one third of the directors has to get retired unless otherwise expressly the provisio, unless otherwise expressly AYA provides a specific uh, condition or a specific rule. So basically, section 152 talks about the appointment of director, that is called the first directors, then consent of the directors, which is very important. The director who is appointed will hold the post till the next annual general meeting, unless expressly there is a provision under the articles of association. And the directors who are retired some of the directors are automatically appointed and some of the directors becomes retired as the directors. Now we are going to the, the continuation of lectures. Another, the prominent subject where lot of litigation is there, lot of uh, judicial adjudication is happening because some of the directors who are committing breach of their duties, right? Breach of the duty of the director will attract the liability under the Companies Act. Now, let us see what are these duties. Because Companies Act 2013 codified all the duties without leaving the scope that if any of the person who violate these duties shall not escape the liabilities. Let us see what are these duties one by one. Subject to the provisions of this act, a director of the company shall act in accordance with the AOA. Right? Again, the first document comes as AOA. Number two, a director of a company shall act in the good faith. So number one is about the good faith and promote the object of the company for the benefits of the members and also the best interest of the company. Kindly remember, you will find this particular terminology very frequently that is called best interest of company has to be promoted by the directors to its employees, shareholders and the directors are also having the duties towards the community and also the protection of environment. Some of us may have a doubt, sir, that how the directors have a duty. Uh, don't get confused between a statutory obligation, 
where a director has a statutory duties under the environmental law legislations to protect the environment. And we all have a fundamental duties. Like every citizen of India have a fundamental duty for to preserve and protection of environment. So the, in the same lines where the duties have been codified under the fundamental duties under the Indian constitutional law and also the duties of every citizen are again re-emphasized, right? A emphasis has given to the directors of the company, protect the community and also protect the environment. That any breach with regard to the protection of community and the protection of environment attract the provisions of the duties of the director's violations. That is the, the prominent duties of the directors. And another duty, a director of a company shall exercise his duties with a due and reasonable care, skill and diligence, and exercise the independent judgment. It is also very important any individual or independent person exercising the duties shall exercise through his judgment and he shall not be influenced by the third party or he should not be influenced by another parties. Because a person is holding a particular obligatory post or a duty which is mandated by the statute should exercise independently and diligently. So kindly remember, the contrary to the provision is that a person who acts negligently, not with the proper care and skill, they become liable. So always the defense grounds. If any client comes to you, sir, I did some this particular act, whether it amounts to the breach of the duty or not, the lawyer or we have to see that whether the person has acted with the proper skill as well as diligently or not. Then another duty, you should not act anything which is called as conflict of interest. So conflict of interest is always as another important point so which we have to be very careful. Because if I am the director, I should not act the conflict of my own interest in the case if I have the shares, if I have some other, uh, what we call about the vested interest. Point number five, a director of the company shall not achieve or attempt to achieve any undue ad gain or undue advantage either to himself or to his relatives or partners, associates and if such director is found guilty, undo gain and shall be liable to the inequal amount to that of the gain. That means if a person is acting in his post and out of the performance of the duties, if there is a gain, say for example, Mr. A performed the duty and gained 10,000 crores, he is supposed to repay the 10,000 crores. And point number six, Subclass number 6 of the section 166. A director shall not assign his office. If any director contravents this provision, punishable, right? Punishable with the fine, not less than to 1 lakh rupees to the 5 lakh rupees. So the punishment is given. If a director is acting contrary to the provisions of this particular act, he is being punishable. And if a director performs his duties, a combination of breach of duty with the fraud, then there is a possibility attracting of a criminal penalty also. And these are all the duties which we can call it as the duties based on the principle based duties. Let us recollect one by one. Under section 166 of the company said, the first duty is that directors acting in the good faith, right? Good faith is the compulsory duty, protection of environment and community, and a director has to exercise his duties 
with a due and reasonable care, skill and diligence, and shall exercise independent judgment. A director of a company shall not involve a situation which is conflict of interest, and he shall not achieve any of the undue gain, and any violations attracts the penal provisions and also the monetary compensations. Because most of the time we find uh, the cases which comes before the court of law on combination of more than one issue. So therefore it always attracts the different provisions. I thought uh, in this class, let us introduce you to the some of the landmark cases which established the, the position of the directors, particularly in the common law countries. And the same principles are also become the part and parcel of Indian law. One of the oldest case which we already read or which are we will be reading Lee versus Lee Air Farming Limited Company. Justice Bowen said in this case, directors are agents, trustees, and managing partners, but each of these expression is used not as exhaustive of their power and responsibility, etc. In the Lee versus Lee case, what you find, Mr. Lee is the founding director of the company. He was the pilot of the aircraft. He was also employee of the company. And one fine day, due to unforeseen, unforeseen activity or unforeseenable thing, Mr. Lee passed away in an air accident. His wife brought the case on the Lee's Air Farming Company Limited. The question came whether a company is a different entity or not. Now let us put the case like this. If I say Mr. A is the founder of A Limited, A is also the employee. A is also managing director, so he is also running aircraft as the employee and Mr. A passed away, Mr. A passed away in gear crash. Now Mrs. A, that is wife of Mr. A brought the case on A Limited. So the case goes like this, Mrs. A versus A Limited whereby asking that A Limited should repay the compensation. So on these similar facts, right, the issue has brought out, though there was only one person who is performing the various duties, they found that the company is different, directors are different, they act with the different duties. This was the uh, jurisprudential aspects of the Lee versus Lee case. The other one is directors as agents. The another landmark case, Ferguson versus Wilson, that the directors are in the eyes of law are agents of the company. These are the certain standard questions which you find in competitive examinations or any of the exams. Because what happens? The company's mind, the company's brain, the company's hands are nothing but of the directors of the company. Because a company is only existing in a legal fiction, you don't have any other legal entity other than the company which is in legal fiction. In realistic theory or in reality, the individuals basically the individuals in the sense, the directors of the company are the mind, are the soul, are the body. So we try to explain in such a way that they have the control over the companies. And there is another case, Percival versus Wright, where it says directors are trustees of the company and not for individual shareholders. So directors are the trustees of the company. And they are trustees to the company, right? They are trustee to company and not to shareholders. 
and this case has lot of criticism right this case has highlighted lot of criticism which we can discuss maybe elaborately when the time permits and we have another case uh, charanjit lal choudhury versus union of india where they also said the supreme court of india the directors are the trustees of the institutions and the social characteristics now let us recollect what we have discussed for last half an hour that is the directors appointment and their duties now in this particular provision we have seen section 152 section 161 section 166 about the duties and also their violation of the duties and punishments and we have also seen uh, some case laws where it was held the directors have certain fundamental duties towards the companies so uh, kindly listen the lecture very carefully and if you find any point of the time some explanation some more discussion on the point i will add the lectures so i am keeping my lectures only for 35 to 40 minutes whereby the listeners can listen and have their own spare times i am not dumping so much whereby it goes sometimes overhead so it is always necessary to understand the subject in the very fundamental basics so the appointment of directors and the duties of the directors duties of the directors all the duties of the directors based on the principles of law kindly remember this point all the duties of the directors are the principles of law violations of the principles of law attract the liability violations of principles of law attracts the responsibility and also the penal provisions as well as the monetary damages so kindly listen write your questions if you have any any questions after listening of lectures so thank you we will meet in another lecture take care